Yancey. Ah, who? Just thought we'd stop by to say goodbye. We're on our way to Nebraska. I thought as much. Yancey, don't dash off without checking. The reporter who wrote this story might have exaggerated the entire thing. Maybe you better read this. Dear old horse, tell Pahu big trouble on reservation. You better come quick. We'll join up at St. Joe, Colorado Charlie. Well, I thought Charlie was up in the Dakotas scouting for General Custer. That he was. I don't like the sound of this. Mr. Colton, have you ever noticed the medal that Pahu wears? Yes. Well, it commemorates a treaty between the United States and the Pawnee Nation, the Table Creek Treaty. It was signed by the Great White Father, President Buchanan, 1857. And it guarantees the Pawnee Nation the protection of the United States Army against the Cheyenne and the Arapaho. Pahu, listen to me. Go back to your tribe, yes. Have them appoint you their spokesman. Then go back to Washington. Demand your legal rights. Make the War Department protect your people with soldiers, as the treaty says. Exactly what I had in mind. Oh? I thought maybe you might give us a letter, an introduction to the right people. Of course. I'll give you a letter to Elvin Watson, head of the Western Frontier in the War Department. He'll enforce the treaty. He'd better. to St. Louis on the Sultana, and then by iron horse to St. Joe, Missouri, jumping off place for all of the wagon trains going west, where Colorado Charlie had already secured supplies and horses. We rode hard to the Platte River, and then by flatboat up to the Pawnee country, where we met in council with the great chiefs. There was Peshla Shara of the Grand Pawnee, Eagle Chief of the Kitkahaki Pawnee, and Pahu's father. Moon on pools of water, chief of the Skeety Pawnee. They gave Pahu the peace pipe that had been smoked when the Table Creek Treaty was signed and appointed him to carry the pipe to the great white father in Washington. Old horse. Yes, Joe. You savvy this may be no picnic for Pahu? What I mean is, feelings is run high. And these too many greenhorns that figure the only good Indian is a dead one. It's up to you and me to civilize them. Oh, now, Yance, you know I, I don't cotton much to civilization. There's too many people. And there's too many jails and there's too many gallows. Tickets? Is Redskin with you? This gentleman's traveling with us, yes. Not on this train, mister. Not first class. We don't carry no hair-lifting aborigines with decent folks. He rides in the baggage car with the other animals or he gets flung off. Those are the rules. Well, now, friend, I got a couple of rules of my own. And one of them is to wipe that big fat mouth yearn off with the back of my fist. Tell him. No. Oh, Yancey, he's got one coming. No. Just one little. No. Not a toothbreaker. We're on a peace mission, remember? Pahu? 
<laughs> What's so humorous, yes? I was just thinking of the look on John Colton's face if he could see us socializing with these high dignitaries. <laughs> well, that's more than you can say. At least we're among friends. It's more than the chickens can say. <laughs> I didn't know you were in Washington. Didn't John tell you? He always makes it a point not to tell me where you are. But as long as you're here, I'm sure he'd want me to give you his uh, personal regards. And yours? <laughs> oh, Yancy, I missed you so. How did you know we were coming? John wired me from New Orleans. He said you were here. I just checked with the hotel to find out when you were arriving, and well, here you are. Hello, Pa. Who? Well, Miss Colton, I'd like for you to know uh, Colorado Charlie. How do you do? Yes, ma'am. You know, Miss Agatha is John Colton's sister. Well, how does such a homely brother have such a pretty sister? Pay attention, that greasy old bathroom. Reservation for three? Oh, yes, Mr. Derringer, if you'd register, please. Thank you. I have it right here. We've reserved a very nice suite for you with a view of the Capitol. Thank you. And the uh, third member of your party? I'll register for him. Pehu Ketewa. Pahu Katewa. Wolf who stands in water. You mean this? This Indian, I'm sorry, Mr. Derringer, but that's quite impossible. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, the fact is we do not accept reservations for savages at the National Hotel. And if I were you, George, I'd refuse lodgings to the kind of squaw man that runs around with them. Tell it once or I'll call the Metropolitan Police. Come on, Pablo. It's outrageous. It's simply outrageous. It sure is, ma'am. So far, Yance has hogged all the fighting to himself. I only had a house, but I'm staying with friends. Well, don't worry about it, Agatha. Run along. We'll get in touch with you later. Very well. Here's my address. And please get in touch with me if you need anything. Right. John has an awful lot of influence in Washington. Well, now, ma'am, I met the administrator, and he can't have as much influence as you have, because he ain't got your weapons. Right. Fine. Well, old horse, what do we do? Pitch a tent on the White House lawn? No. Nah. In civilization, there's always one place where folks are downright tolerant to have bridging these like us. Come on, I'll show you. <sighs> Just like I told you. Soft beds, cold run water, no back talk. Get up, you knock me cayuse. Probably thinks you're a greasy old bear. <laughs> Maybe so. Say, Yance, that fellow you chopped down back there, his name is Dingo. Jack Dingo. I've seen him before, plenty. Where? Out in the Indian territories. You want to buy trouble? He sells it. Ammunition, gun, whiskey. I wonder what a fellow like that's doing here in Washington. Be 
be so easy. You're not just dealing with a simple savage. He's traveling with a hard case by the name of Yancey Derringer. Alas, how quickly the barometer falls from fair to rainy. They both came to town with one of Custer's scouts, Colorado Charlie. And from rainy to stormy. Watson, you and me got a lot of money tied up in this thing. Mr. Dingo, I assure you that I'm just as greedy as you are. Entree? Mr. Watson? I am he. And I presume you would be Mr. Derringer. That's right. And that frightening fellow over there would be Pahu Katawa, mighty chief of the Pawnee Nation. And where on earth did you ever get that suit? It's absolutely elegant. I could give you the name of my tailor, but he works in New Orleans. Oh, that's a pity. I have a letter here from John Colton. And that uh, transparent look in your eyes, quite obvious, Mr. Derringer. How you are saying to yourself that this chap ever wound up as head of the department of the Western Frontier, land of the scalp lock and the tomahawk and the six-shooter. Well, sir, let me tell you, it wasn't easy. It required blackmail, influence, politics, and a few scalps of a different kind. Mr. Watson, this is Colorado Charlie. How do you do? Howdy. As you know, we've come here to... I know why you've come, Mr. Derringer. Tell me... Doesn't he talk? What was that? He says there ain't no point in talking. That there ain't nobody gonna listen. <laughs> Astute soul, isn't he? Can we get down to facts, Mr. Watson? The Table Creek Treaty, as you know... Has been broken, I know. You wish me to send in the army. But at the moment, I'm afraid I have to refuse. Why? I have many reports that the Pawnees were the first to break the treaty, that they struck from their reservation and marauded and murdered and pillaged. Eh? He says that's a lie. A big, fat lie. Doesn't mince words, does he? He does tell the truth. My point is that I have to examine these reports and verify their veracity or audacity. In the meantime, I'm having a little reception at my house this evening, and I wish you all would come. Our Indian chief may make some friends there who might be big medicine for him. Thank you, Mr. Watson, but I'm afraid we have a previous engagement. You mean with Agatha Colton? She's already been invited. At 7 o'clock, my secretary will give you the address. Thank you, Mr. Watson. We'll be there. Au revoir. Good day. Like I told you, it's a very hard case. What are you going to do? Kill them. Kill them. Socially, I mean. That's a fate worse than death. Good day, Mr. Dingo. Oh, come on, old horse. Have a heart. Look, if I got a bite to dust, let me do it on a battlefield. Not in this saber, too. Piece of starch on my neck. You keep your arms down, I'm going to bust them. Boy, they're trying to ambush you. Can't you read the sign? All we gotta do is make Pa, who's a laughing stock, and Watson will prove that that Table Creek Treaty ain't worth nothing but bullets. I don't know, but Watson can help us. And I'm gonna play his game until he proves he's a liar. And Pa, who, no matter what happens tonight, no matter what anyone does, I want you to do absolutely nothing. You understand? Good. But that don't go nothing for me. Oh, yes, it does, too. But it don't go none for me. Well, Mr. Derringer, our Indian friend seems to be creating quite a spectacle, doesn't he? Not nearly as much of a spectacle as those who are staring at him. Come now, Miss Colton, let's not take things too seriously. We Easterners seldom get a chance to see the Indian savage off his battleground. All right, Margot, let's go to work. Oh, by the way, he is safely leashed, didn't he? Oh, really, Mr. Watson? Jack, you ought to buy him and open up a cigar store. He'd make a fine wooden Indian. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it some thought. What's the matter, Big Chief? Cat got your tongue? <laughs> well, he sure ain't got yours, ma'am. Those bear claws will make a wonderful back scratcher. <laughs> oh, what's this? Uh-oh. Let it alone. Why, Mr. Derringer, 
Are you his keeper? Let go of me, you dirty savage. Well, you can't get away with that. Sure was a nice party, ma'am. Not now, dear. Good night, sir. Oh, Mr. Stevens, you're not leaving. Mr. Watson, I have never seen such disgraceful behavior. Of course, they're savages. On the part of an official of the War Department, I promise you, the matter will not end here. Miss Colton? Mr. Stevens. I hope your friends don't think the behavior I've just seen is a true barometer of our Washington legislators. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Good night. Mr. Stevens, may we have an appointment at your office tomorrow morning? What about, Miss Colton? About keeping the western frontier from going up in flames. 11 o'clock. Thank you. Mr. Dingo, how dedicated are you to your lust for loot? What's gone wrong? Derringer got to Thad Stevens. The Indians are dressing Congress tomorrow. That is, unless something happens to him before me. Where are they staying? Jones Livery Stable on G Street. of the Congress will come to order on a matter of special business. Mr. Colfax, the Speaker of the Senate, yields the chair to Congressman Thaddeus Stevens. Gentlemen of the Congress, we are assembled here today in joint session to hear the acting chief of the Pawnee Nation, Wolf, who stands in water. There's Yancey. The chief will address us in sign language universal language of the plains. His translator will be Mr. Yancey Derringer. Chiefs, you have the floor. All the great chiefs of this land, I speak to you now with a true tongue and a true heart. Long time ago, my fathers found a land by a bright river. There was many buffalo. The earth was good. We built our lodges and placed our teepees and lived in honor. When the white man came, we never fought him. We offered him friendship and lived as brothers. We gave our word, never broke it. When the finger chopper, Cheyenne, came and attacked the white man, we fought the Cheyenne with him. We were his eyes and his friends. We signed Table Creek Treaty. The great white father live as brothers. For the big writing, your own constitution, 
is that all men are equal. Now our hearts are heavy. The treaty is broken. The land is stolen. Children are slain. I ask you from a true heart Send soldiers to help the Pawnee. We have lived as brothers. Now I ask you. For a brother's help. I have spoken. What a pity to leave. It's really a very good speech. The measure has previously been put before the floor. I now ask for a voice vote on it. All in favor? All opposed, the ayes have it. This Congress reaffirms the Table Creek Treaty and directs the President of the United States to dispatch immediately sufficient military forces to protect the Pawnee Nation from all invaders without lawful right. I'll be a cross-eyed busy man if you ain't gonna do it. Does the chief understand? Does he realize Congress has voted for him? Uh -huh. How wonderful to see you. What are you doing here? Well, John, I was going to send my regards, but then Yancey persuaded me to bring them along in person. Yancey? You mean you traveled all the way from yes, Washington John. with him? Yes, John. Without a chaperone? Well, now, Pa, who was there? And that was me. Yancey, you're going to answer to me for this. Charlie, I'm afraid I have to agree with you. I certainly don't understand how such a beautiful sister could have such a homely brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 